Today, I was asked to, um, to, to give you a summary of the uh, ASLD uh, easel workshop that was held uh, last year um, uh, on the um, um, uh, new endpoints uh, to, to, to guide clinical research for, for new treatments. Uh, so you, you, you've heard uh, from uh, uh, Pietro's talk um, um, ju just a minute ago uh, that with the uh, uh, current, uh, currently available drugs uh, and mainly nucleoside analogs, we, we, we can really induce valve suppression in the majority of patients uh, and thereby um, leading to a, a decreased risk of uh, liver cirrhosis. Uh, but as you know, the uh, risk of HCC uh, is reduced after five years of, of treatment, but it's not eliminated. Uh, so we really are here to um, try to, f to, to find new treatments uh, based on uh, uh, novel molecular entities or so novel antiviral agents so that we can uh, achieve a cure of the infection with, with a, a short, uh, short duration treatment. Uh, that would be based uh, either on direct antivals or immunomodulatory uh, strategies or the combination of the two uh, so that we can uh, further improve um, our prevention of, of liver cirrhosis uh, and, uh, and liver cancer. <coughs> so obviously one of the questions is whether HBV cure is, is possible. And, uh, uh, the uh, classic uh, statement or question uh, that is uh, taken by, uh, very often by, by analogs is whether treatment can, can accomplish what, what nature can't. And you know that uh, HBV uh, persists in, uh, in persons who have recovered from acute hepatitis B uh, with seroconversion to anti-HBS, and we know that CCC DNA is a viral mini chromosome persist in the liver uh, of these people. Uh, and we, we know that if there's uh, uh, a potent uh, immunosuppressive therapy or, or some uh, uh, extreme condition like uh, tr transplantation and so on, uh, uh, these, these patients may see reactivation of, of the virus. So, so in the end, uh, uh, these patients who recovered from an acute infection are in a situation where they have a functional cure. HBS is, uh, is gone, but CCC DNA is maintained in, in, in the liver. So the, a, a complete cure is not achieved uh, in, in, in nature. Uh, so what are the uh, uh, barriers to eradicating HBV? Um, so I just uh, I told you that there are many two, two main factors. One are uh, on the vowel side and, and the other ones are on the immune side. Uh, regarding the, the vowel side, uh, the, the main driver for persistence is the CCC DNA reservoir. Uh, it has a long half-life within infected hepatocytes. It has a continuous replenishment within the, uh, these infected cells. And it, they are, it is not affected directly by, by nucleoside analogs or, uh, and uh, uh, marginally by interferon. And there is also the issue of integrated forms of, of HBV. Regarding the uh, uh, immune component of our persistence, uh, uh, you, you know that there are uh, in chronically infected patients, the CD8 uh, um, uh, specific, HBV specific CD8 responses are defective as well as B cell responses and the uh, innate responses are, are inefficient. Uh, so altogether, all this leads to, to chronic uh, infection persistence and also failure to eradicate CCC DNA when patients are treated. Uh, just here, a, a, a clinical example where you, you see um, uh, a cohort of patients that are co-infected with H HIV and HPV, treated for HIV uh, uh, for, for many years with, with tenofovir, uh, and uh, obviously it, it had the dual action on, on HBV, so we had a long-term uh, observation in these patients. So all these patients had uh, undetectable varemia uh, because of tenofovir uh, uh, treatment. But when you look at the decline of HBS antigen uh, after years of treatment, you see uh, that this decline was, was uh, really marginal, very slow, um, and the levels were plateauing. Um, when we, we, we had the opportunity to look at the uh, uh, liver compartment, and when you look at the uh, um, a level of CCC DNA uh, in the uh, patients who had paired biopsy during uh, the uh, uh, observation, uh, you see that CCC DNA declined but was never, never cleared from the liver. And the um, 
uh, slow kinetics of clearance of CCC DNA were, were modeled, and uh, this, uh, mod this model were consistent with the fact that there were new round of infection uh, and or replenishment within the uh, infected cells of CCC DNA pool, uh, despite this so-called viral suppression. So this observation meant that uh, despite undetectable HBV DNA in serum, there was still some uh, replication ongoing under the level of detectability uh, of the PCR assays that are uh, used in the clinic. Um, well, if we want to go beyond viral suppression and uh, uh, induce a loss of HBS, um, there, it's, only, it's not only because we can stop treatment, be, 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 but it is also because we can further decrease the risk of liver cancer. And, and this was shown in, in different court studies, and here just one, one example uh, from uh, an Asian uh, 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 famous court, the Reveal study, where they, they showed again recently uh, that patients who, who, who lost not, not only had an HBV DNA suppression, but also an HBS loss, um, had a further decrease of their, their risk of liver cancer. So now if we want to, to achieve a cure of uh, infection, it, it becomes quite clear that at least in the first steps, we, we need to, to uh, discover uh, drugs that will be direct-acting antivirals, uh, and also uh, new immunotherapeutics, as uh, it is very likely that we'll have to combine uh, uh, both type of, um, uh, of mode of action. Um, and uh, so we need to have drug discovery efforts that are already ongoing, and we'll hear that this, this afternoon. Uh, we need to have the, the right clinical development of, the, of these new strategies, and in, in the future, we'll have to, to see uh, how we can improve access to care, especially in the high, highly endemic uh, areas uh, where um, um, a treatment is very difficult to, to, to access. So you know that currently um, um, the, there's a lack of impact of the uh, uh, available antivirals on CCC DNA, uh, whether it is uh, um, the nukes that have uh, just an indirect effect on the replenishment of CCC DNA uh, and interferon with a marginal effect uh, on CCC DNA transcriptional activity and maybe uh, on degradation. Now the, there's a lot of effort ongoing now to, to identify new targets, novel drugs, and develop them in the, in the clinic. I won't go through, through them in detail because it will be addressed this afternoon. Um, they, are, they all uh, target the main steps of the viral life cycle or the, uh, the uh, uh, most important uh, uh, pathway uh, of, let's say, immune defect uh, in, in, in the patients to, to boost the uh, immune responses in, in these patients. So there's a lot of things going on a lot of research activities, and um, it, it is now the, uh, um, the, the role of the community here to see what, what can we do uh, to guide the, the research and, and make it efficient so that we can uh, 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 discover really new strategies and then achieve a cure of the infection uh, within the next few years. So it's the reason why there was this uh, uh, workshop that was uh, organized by ASLD and ESL um, to um, really um, find uh, a standardized appraisal of the efficacy and safety of these treatments and, and define new uh, or additional endpoints to, to inform clinical trials. Uh, and this, uh, um, this uh, workshop was uh, um, done not only with the two internal, international societies but also with FDA and, and EMA. Uh, and the pharma industry uh, as well, so that we, we could try to develop a consensus on these treatment endpoints to, to guide the design uh, of clinical trials uh, aiming at uh, HBV cure. So first, it there was a lot of discussion regarding the definition of cure, and uh, as I told you at the, uh, in the introduction, what we'd like to, to achieve is, uh, with a short-term uh, uh, treatment, um, a clearance of HBS antigen so that we can stop treatment uh, with uh, uh, finite duration treatment. So there were a different level of definition of cure that were uh, um, 
discuss the partial cure where it, after treatment withdrawal, HBS antigen level would, would go down, HBV DNA would be undetectable in serum. There would still be persistence of CCC DNA in the liver and uh, integrated forms there. Um, this is something interesting, but this is not sufficient. This is not our, our, our uh, ultimate goal. Um, the uh, functional cure, the next step, where HBS antigen is, uh, uh, is cleared from serum, HBV DNA is obviously suppressed in, in, in serum, uh, and CCC DNA uh, persists but, it, but is controlled either by the immune responses or, or by uh, other host mechanism. Um, then you could imagine a, a further step, which is a complete cure, uh, where HBS antigen is lost and you have in addition, a, a complete eradication of CCC DNA with a maintenance of integrated uh, form. In that situation, there would be no risk of reactivation of the virus because CCC DNA, the viral mini chromosome, would, 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 be, uh, would be gone. And then there's the, uh, the dream, which would be the sterilizing cure, where you, you would have all these uh, 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 um, markers that would be gone but also, in addition, the, uh, the loss of the integrated form so that you, you could imagine that there would be a, a reversal to, uh, to the situation where patients wouldn't have been infected by the virus. You can, you can still dream. Uh, so they, they were, it's another way here to, to present the, uh, uh, the, the definition and the concept. Uh, here you see the, the partial cure that I defined. So what is uh, the uh, uh, counterpart on, on, in terms of liver? Uh, a disease, so there would be a decreased necroinflammation, fibrosis would persist, but as well as the risk of liver cancer. For the functional cure, um, there would be uh, a regression of fibrosis and the risk of HCC uh, would decrease uh, further. Regarding the sterilizing cure, as I told you, we would like to restore the liver to, to the normal situation with a, a risk of HCC that would be eliminated. So here there question marks because we, we don't know if this will be feasible in, in, in the future. So regarding this consensus uh, at, the, uh, at the workshop, there was really a vast majority of the, uh, 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 of the people uh, participating at this um, meeting that really saw that the functional cure, so the sustained loss of HBS, would be really the goal for, for new therapies. Uh, there are ad advantages because it's easy to assess uh, it is associated with improved clinical outcomes, lower rate of disease reactivation, uh, and there will be no further requirement for therapy. So there was less consensus regarding the need for anti-HBS antibody seroconversion, and I will come back to that in, in a minute. Uh, there was a lot of discussion whether uh, elimination or silencing of CCC DNA would be a mandatory criterion for, for functional cure. So it was, there were some uncertainties because uh, uh, new therapies in, in development today, um, um, are, we are not sure that they can silence or clear CCC DNA. Uh, and there's also some pragmatic difficulties to, to measure CCC DNA in, in the clinic because we would need to have uh, biopsies and standardized assays. Um, the partial cure uh, was thought to be uh, acceptable uh, as an intermediary step uh, toward functional cure, uh, so that um, uh, we, we could, uh, it could be achievable in the short term, um, and it could expedite drug development. But th that would be just a, a, a transient step towards the, the functional cure in our strategy. So regarding the durability of HBS loss, depending on, on anti-S antibody seroconversion, then after that meeting uh, last year, uh, um, uh, Gilead, we have to, to name them, uh, they took it seriously. So they came back, they, they, go, they, came, they, they went back to the uh, uh, clinical trials where they, they of tenofovir and interferon and combination, and they looked at the patients who, who, who cleared HBS, and they looked whether um, uh, anti-HBS antibody w w was important or not to maintain HBS loss. Um, and uh, um, from that poster that was presented by, by Henry Chan at the uh, uh, latest EASL meeting, it was shown that uh, uh, um, uh, in uh, more than 95% of cases, HBS loss was durable if it was confirmed 24 weeks apart uh, and zero conversion to anti-HBS was not important and the uh, impact of interferon uh, was, was um, marginal there. So clearly, if HBS loss is confirmed 24 weeks 
um, a part, we don't need anti-S uh, zero conversion. So that was a, quite a, a, clear, a clear message here for the community. So um, regarding efficacy endpoint for clinical trials, there was a lot of discussion on normal, uh, what is a normal ALT, so I won't go through this in detail, we can discuss that. Um, the non-invasive assessments of liver fibrosis, um, and there was really a lot of discussion, I think it, it is very important, whether liver biopsy may be required in proof of concept studies uh, to confirm novel mode of action uh, and or validate non-invasive uh, uh, surrogate markers. Um, clearance of HBS antigen, um, uh, clearly this is what we, we want to achieve, uh, and that was a, cl a clear consensus. There was no consensus uh, on the kinetics of decline in HBS antigen. Um, uh, and we'll have to see, depending on where we are in phase two or phase three, what endpoint we choose and at which time uh, in the clinical trial. So there, there was a lot of discussion regarding diagnostic assays to, for new uh, uh, biomarkers to, to determine therapeutic efficacy. Uh, um, and uh, it was emphasized that we need uh, new markers to predict and assist uh, the clinical development of new drugs. As we know, HBS clearance kinetics are, are quite slow. So if you look at this uh, slide, and this will be assessed, addressed uh, uh, later on by, by Florian, uh, you see here the, the markers that are uh, currently uh, uh, either available or studied. Here the, the HBS antigen, the viral load here, and the quantitative HBS, classic one, and there are new, new ones circulating HBV RNA and HBC-related antigen in, in, in serum. And the idea is whether we, we can uh, have a, a prediction of what is happening in the liver of patients in terms of CCC, DNA, integrated form, and uh, transcriptional activity. Um, and depending on, on the uh, uh, drugs that are uh, administered, uh, these biomarkers may, may prove very interesting. And, and I will just switch to the next slide, and it will be addressed later on by Florian. So that's for the viral markers, but there are also clinical immunology assays that will be important. Uh, if we want to develop uh, new immunotherapeutic uh, uh, approaches. And uh, as you know, the, the goal would be to restore the B or T cell activity and boost the innate immunity. Then we need to, to have clinical assays uh, uh, to uh, monitor um, this restoration of immune responses. Assessment of safety was also something very important. Um, uh, uh, as well as stopping rules. Um, as you know, the, we have a remarkable safety profile with the, the current nukes, uh, and, and there's a, a really a stringent requirement for safety of the new HBV therapies. There was a lot of discussion regarding hepatitis flares, and we, we, we discussed that uh, uh, at large last year at, the, at this workshop. So, so this is something that should be considered and would be followed very carefully during clinical development. And regarding the design of clinical trials, um, we think at, at this stage that the combination of antivirals and Im immune modulatory agents is most likely needed. Um, we'll need to uh, uh, establish antiviral activity and safety uh, in monotherapy, uh, and drug interaction should be established first before progressing to combination trials. But FDA was quite clear that the demonstration of e efficacy as a monotherapy uh, is not required if we want to go for combination trials. So we we'll need randomized trials to, to, to establish efficacy, and we need to demonstrate superiority uh, of the investigational uh, uh, treatments. So the summary, um, so we, a functional cure was thought to be uh, the main goal, the main end point to, to achieve, because the, uh, all the community believes that this is an attainable goal. Uh, we need to, to, to go for surrogate markers for cure to, uh, to assist clinical trials in, in a fast manner so that we don't wait for years to, to see the endpoint to, to occur. Um, and we will have to, to do uh, limited proof of concept monotherapy studies to evaluate safety and antiviral activity prior to proceeding to combination uh, uh, treatment. And the safety of the new regimen will be uh, paramount uh, given the excellent safety of the current uh, treatments. 
And to finish, the HBV cure is, is an attainable goal within the next decade. We are all here to, to, to work on, uh, to achieve this goal, but we will manage only in co if we have collaboration between academia, industry, uh, stakeholders like regulatory agencies, and this will be very important uh, to, to, uh, to uh, achieve this goal in, in a few years. And uh, here you have uh, also have to mention the, this international uh, coalition that, uh, to eradicate HBV called the ICE HBV that is starting and is really trying to federate uh, people working on HBV uh, towards that goal. Thank you for your attention.